All right, guys, this video is going to get into Earth's chemistry and minerals. It's a basic introduction to the unit uh, that we just started, our rocks and minerals unit. We'll get into what a mineral is. We'll get into a more formal definition later on, but for right now, we'll just keep it basic. We'll get into about how many minerals there are and how many are common, a little bit about the Earth's crust and the chemistry of it. Get into a little bit about the rock and the non-rock forming minerals, these classifications of minerals. All right, so let's take a look at something we know. Here's the Earth. Um, something to note is that the Earth is dominantly made of rocks and minerals. And so before we get into rocks, let's talk for a minute about what minerals are. Uh, here is a rock, and it's a pretty common rock. It's called granite. It's probably something you guys are mostly, uh, most of you guys are familiar with. And if you take a look, and, and you'll notice that this rock has a bunch of different colors. You, you see some white color and some black color, and maybe this little smoky color over here, the kind of gray stuff. Each one of those are different minerals, which highlights the point that rocks are made of minerals. So really, minerals are the ingredients for rocks. And when we talk about minerals and rocks, we're going to concentrate right here on the crust because this really is where most rocks and minerals are found. Sure, there's rocks and minerals as you go deeper into the earth, but a lot of them melt with the higher temperatures and such. The crust is where we get all of our resources from. It's where we dig all the rocks and minerals out that we use for all of our everyday life and all the conveniences of things that we use our minerals for. So we're going to mainly just concentrate on the crust. The main takeaway point here is that rocks are made of minerals. They're the main ingredients that go into them. So just how many minerals are there in the Earth's crust? Well, here's a uh, little word cloud to show some of the highlights, some of the big ones here. And if we count all these up, we'll see there's about 4,000 known minerals. If you take out any textbook of minerals, you'll see that it's about 4,000 catalogs. Uh, we'll get to know every single one of them in class. Just kidding. Uh, we will, uh, we're going to get to know maybe about 10 or so. Why? Because of the 4,000 known minerals, 20 or so are common, and, and there's about half that are really common. So, again, out of the 4,000 known minerals, only 20 are common. In fact, they're so common, these minerals here, that they make up 90% of the mass of Earth. 90% of the mass of Earth. And I want to say that again. It's not these 4,000 here that make up the 90% of the mass of Earth. It's these 20 that make up the 90% of the mass of Earth. And we'll get to know probably about half of them as the course goes on. So why are there so few common elements? It has to do with this, Earth's chemistry. Here's a periodic table of the elements. It shows every th all the elements that make up all the matter here on Earth. And if we were to count these up or s and get into it, there's about 90 naturally occurring elements. And what I mean by naturally occurring is that there are a few on here that are man-made, that are made in a lab. And the thing that uh, that makes those 20 minerals so common is that even though there's 90 naturally occurring elements on Earth or within Earth's crust, there's only eight that are common. And I like to call these the elite eight. And these elite eight elements are so common that instead of all of these making up the entire crust, these elite eight make up about 98% of all of the elements found within the Earth's crust. And again, what are elements? Elements are things that make up all matter, and matter is everything. Matter is anything that you can name, pretty much. So these elements right here, oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, magnesium, calcium, potassium, sodium, and a few other trace ones, small ones, small amounts of other ones, make up 98% of the Earth's crust. Just these eight alone, and I call these the elite eight. Now again, we can take a look at this and go back to the periodic table and remember that there's over 90 naturally occurring elements on here. And of these, when it comes to making minerals in the Earth's crust, only these eight are important. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, which one of these should I know? These are the two big ones right here, silicon and oxygen. Why? Because if you add them up, 46 plus 28, so we have uh, 68, about 75%. About 75% of that 
of that 98%, about 75% is all silicon and oxygen. These are the two main ones. These are the two big ones that you really absolutely have to know. The chemical formula for oxygen is simply O, and the chemical formula or symbol for silicon is simply SI. Now, what's a couple of others that you should be familiar with? You should be familiar with iron, and the symbol for iron is FE. And you should also be familiar with magnesium, Mg. Now, you don't need to worry about the percentages for magnesium and for iron. Just know that they're small. But when it comes to oxygen and silicon, you should know that the most common, well, I use this word a lot. Instead of common, I use abundant. Abundant just means common. That the most abundant element found within the Earth's crust, 46% is oxygen and 28% is silicon. And together, oxygen and silicon make up 75% of all the elements found within the Earth's crust. The most common two are oxygen and silicon. Now the other two, something to notice about these guys, iron and magnesium, is that they're both metals. And these guys here, they're not metals. They're nonmetals. And we'll get into that just a little bit uh, a little bit later on. So what does this have to do with why there are only 20 common minerals in the Earth's crust? Well, look at it this way. Let's say you open up your pantry and you got a whole bunch of Wonder Bread and you got a whole bunch of Spam and you have a little bit of peanut butter. And this is all the food you're going to have for quite a while. What could you make? Well, you could have maybe a plain bread sandwich. You can have plain Spam. You can have a Wonder Bread and Spam sandwich. You could have fried Spam, grilled Spam, boiled Spam, broiled Spam, microwave Spam, grilled Spam, barbecued Spam, however you want to smoke Spam, however you want to have it, you can have your Spam. With the bread, you could toast it. You can leave it plain. Maybe you can mix it with a little bit of water, make some kind of pasty ball out of it. You can mix Spam and Wonder Bread any which way you want. But there's only going to be so many different combinations you can get with the Spam and the Wonder Bread. And then let's say you dig back in that pantry and you find a little bit of Skippy peanut butter. Now this changes it up a little bit. You can have peanut butter, but you don't have a lot of it. You have a lot more bread and a lot more Spam than you do peanut butter. So what that means is this. Most of what you're going to make is going to involve bread and Spam. And every now and again, you'll make something that involves a little bit of peanut butter there. Because, well, you've got a lot of the other two things, but you don't have a lot of Skippy. Well, this is kind of the way it works with the Earth's crust. Most of the elements that are in the Earth's crust are silicon and oxygen. And what that means is these are your main ingredients. So when you go to make minerals within the Earth's crust, they're going to be made of your dominant ingredients. So the most common minerals, the most common minerals are made of the most common ingredients. or elements. So the most common minerals are made of the most common elements and that's why you only get 20 or so that are common because you only have a limited number of ingredients that can go into your minerals just like the Spam and the peanut butter and the Wonder Bread. You're only going to get so many different combinations of Spam and Wonder Bread and peanut butter. That's it. So you're not going to wind up with a whole buffet of choices when you want to have something to eat. Same thing with the minerals of the Earth's crust. There's a limited set of ingredients or a limited set of elements, and those limited elements go into making the most common minerals in the Earth's crust. So that's why even though there's 4,000 minerals within the Earth's crust, only 20 are common because there's a limited set of ingredients. Let's talk about a couple of mineral groups here, the rock-forming versus the non-rock-forming minerals. The rock-forming minerals, as the name suggests, will be the most common minerals that are found in most rocks.
Now, why are these minerals so common? Because they're made of the most common ingredients. Again, those ingredients were silicon and oxygen. These minerals will contain silicon and oxygen, these rock-forming minerals. And in fact, we call the combination of silicon and oxygen, we call them silicates. The combination of silicon and oxygen is what a silicate is. Now, there may be other things in there, maybe a couple of metals like magnesium and iron and aluminum, potassium, and the, all the things that we saw back in the previous chart. But for this combination of silicon and oxygen, that's what a silicate is. What are the two most common minerals, or the two most common silicate minerals? They're quartz and feldspar. Quartz and feldspar are so common, they make up 96% of the Earth's crust. These minerals, these rock-forming minerals, are so common, they make up 96% of the Earth's crust. And again, Quartz and feldspar are the two most common minerals found within the Earth's crust. In fact, out of all the rock-forming minerals, quartz and feldspar, they make up 90% of all of the rock-forming minerals. That's how abundant they are. So quartz and feldspar, 90% of all the rock-forming minerals, meaning they're really, really common, and all the rock-forming minerals in general make up 96% of all the minerals found in the Earth's crust. Now, how about the non-rock-forming mineral minerals? These are mostly made of metals and combination of metals. So you'll see a lot of iron. You'll see a lot of magnesium. Maybe you'll see some potassium. And maybe you'll see some aluminum and combinations of things with these. And it's not that these guys don't have any silicon and oxygen. They may have the silicate combination, but it's just that they have more metals than the silicate. And so because the silicate is so rare here, they call them the non-silicates, the non-silicates. And again, they're mostly made of metals. And if these guys make up 96% of the Earth's crust, these non-rock-forming minerals make up about 4% of the Earth's crust. But I want to point something out here. They're still really important. Why? Because they're mostly metals. Everything from copper to aluminum to iron, magnesium, potassium, all these things that we use in our everyday lives that surround us in all of our electronics, our homes, our buildings, our cars, they're all made of metals. So these non-rock forming minerals are still a very valuable economic resource for us. All right, so that's it. In this video, we talked about what a mineral was, and we talked about how many there were, 4,000, and about 20 or so are common. We talked about why they're common. It has to do with the elements in the Earth's crust. There are 90 naturally occurring elements, but only eight of those are common. We called those the Elite Eight. Then we talked about the rock-forming minerals versus the non-rock-forming minerals, or the silicates versus the non-silicates, and how both are an important resource for us here on Earth. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me send it along via Edmodo or just ask in class. Make sure you answer the WSQ when you're done with this. And if you missed any part of this, go back and look through it and take.